Hey, Connect. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name's Chris. I get to serve on the team. And thrilled you decided to join us today. Today's kind of a special day. The message, the service are going to look a little different than a typical Sunday because today's Vision Sunday. And I'm excited to share with you where we're heading as a church this year and in the years to come. But before we do any of that, let's pray. I know Garrett just prayed, but you're going to see this vision isn't just some pie, uh, pie in the clouds kind of thing. This is a very prayerful vision. So let's start this time together with a posture of prayer, and then we'll look backwards before we look forwards. Lord, we come before you, eager to encounter you. Uh, we, we trust that when we open your word, you speak to us. And as Garrett just prayed, Lord, we have seen your faithfulness time and time again, and we are so grateful for that. And we, we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise for what you have done in us, what you have done through us as a church, you get all the praise. And as we seek you and what you have next for us as a church, we do so in this posture of prayer. Would we, would we hear from you? Would we encounter you? Would you lead us forward and would you give us the faith to follow? the faith to walk in step with your spirit. So, Holy Spirit, please speak now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, in a moment, we're going to look forward. But before we go forward, let's look backward. Now, this, uh, some of this is going to be familiar if you've been around Connect or heard me share any of the Connect story. Uh, consider it just a, a, you know, an opportunity to reminisce, to remember God's faithfulness. For those of you who haven't heard bits and pieces of the journey, hey, this is an invitation for all of us to link arms together and seek God's kingdom right here in South Denver as it is in heaven. So it started for me uh, about a decade ago. I was back at Denver Seminary studying. I was getting my Master of Divinity, lots of studies there. And one of my homework assignments was to pray about my calling. I thought, finally, a practical homework assignment. You see, at the time, I was also in process at a church in town for a college and sports pastor position. I was pretty excited about the job, but I hadn't felt like I really heard from God as to whether I should say yes to this yet. So I was praying, and I went down one beautiful fall afternoon, walked down the South Platte Trail with Amanda, and we posted up at Nixon's Coffee House. If you've ever been on the South Platte Trail, it's that coffee shop right there. And we just sat there for a couple of hours, and I prayed, God, what are you calling me to? What are you calling me to? Hoping that he would tell me whether or not I should say yes to this job. But God was silent about that job. And he was loud about my calling. To make disciples who make disciples, to develop leaders who develop leaders, and to plant churches who plant churches. It's like, okay, okay. Well, Fast forward a few years, Amanda and I are living in Maine at the time, and life was good. Life was real good, ministry was good, Hannah had just been born, our oldest daughter, and one night, just about six years ago now, one night, Amanda looks at me across the dinner table and just asks, so when do you think God wants us to plant that church? I was like, well, I hadn't considered it recently, life's good. This is comfortable. But that question brought us to our knees. And it invited us into one of the most thrilling seasons of our lives. Because as we sought God in prayer, we got to encounter him. We heard from him in so many different ways. Regularly, we would read scripture during our chair time and we would hear God speak to us. It, it felt so personal and so clear. We had conversations with our lead pastor and elders around what God was stirring in us. Uh, before we even knew where we were going to plant this church, we called Tyler and Emmy and said, would you guys begin praying with us? We feel like God's stirring something in our spirits. Would you begin praying with us and pray about what it could look like to be a part of this together? And I remember one morning in particular, I was at our church's weekly prayer service. And as an elder read 
Psalm 104. All he did was read it. He didn't add any of his own commentary. He just read Psalm 104. All about the magnificence of God's creation. I pictured the front range. And I didn't just picture the front range in its, its physical magnificence. What I saw was this, this invitation to join God in his work here and to be part of a spiritual renewal in the front range. You see, God was calling us to Colorado. A month or two later, woke up in the middle of the night. Never had this happen. I've woken up in the middle of the night many, many times. I had never woken up like this. 1 a.m., dead asleep, wide awake like that. And it felt like God was impressing to me that my thoughts and ways are not his thoughts and ways. But if I would lay down my thoughts and ways and pursue his thoughts and ways, then he'd include me in something bigger than I could ask or imagine. I wish I had the faith to just engage God in that moment, but I wanted to go back to sleep. So I told him that. God, can we do this in the morning? I want to sleep. But in that, that morning, when I woke up, and I realized that doesn't happen every night, hadn't happened prior, hasn't happened since, I read a passage from Isaiah 55. And in verses 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I figured, okay, if God went to the extent of waking me up in the middle of the night to get my attention, I should probably pay attention. So I spent the rest of the summer memorizing not just those verses, the whole chapter of Isaiah 55. I was like, God, I want every bit of what you want to say to me through this passage. And as we prayed, we, we kept hearing from God again and again and again. And I don't have time to tell you all the different cool ways. I'm telling you, it was the most thrilling season of our lives. But there was a, a moment at the end of that summer, the end of the summer of 2018, where Amanda and I were like, okay, he's calling us to Colorado, but like where? Where specifically? So we fasted and prayed for 40 days, and we just asked God, where are you calling us to? Like, can you speak specifically? Like, where is this? And in that season, I got to talk to some local pastors here. I also, having had done ministry in this area, Amanda grew up here, I and mean, we knew of the church landscape here and all the amazing things God was doing. So I, I literally created a Google map. And I put pins on that map with all the Jesus-centered churches all, that I knew of. Uh, if they were saying, if they had any inkling of wanting to point people to Jesus, I was like, great, you get a spot on the map. And as we looked at this map, and as we reflected on the conversations we had, and we went through this prayerful process, we really sensed God was leading us to South Denver. And specifically, Lone Tree, where there was going to be a lot of people moving to the area, but not enough churches to connect them. Let's fast forward a little more. On September 29th, 2019, right here in this room, we gathered for the very first time as a church. It wasn't for a service like this. That wouldn't come for a year plus later. We gathered to launch a couple community groups. And the reason was, is it really came down to what Jesus taught what he commissioned his followers to do. He said it this way in Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and make disciples. And what we also know is that in Matthew 16, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Call us simple. We just took Jesus at his word. He, he said, go make disciples. So we're like, all right, let's try to make disciples. Let's do what Jesus asked us to do. And we started with a couple groups. We saw four people get baptized. We saw those two groups become four groups heading into the beginning of 2020. Things were rocking and rolling. It was exciting. And we were trusting that as we were doing what Jesus said we should do, make disciples, he would do what he promised he would do. He would build his church. And uh, then COVID hit. And that was like the first big lesson for me, that this church planning journey was not going to look like what I had planned and pictured. I didn't plan for COVID. 
did not plan for COVID. But you know what? I see God's hand in how he moved in that time for us. Because he had given us this mission to connect the disconnected to a growing relationship with him. And that mission was amplified. Like on a global scale, amplified. Through COVID. I would never wish COVID to happen, but I see how God brought us to this place for such time as this. And uh, it was in that, that summer of 2020, we had started online services because it was like the only thing we could do at the time. We're like, well, we got to do something to get the gospel out. We were doing online services and we were in a season as a church of 40 days of prayer and fasting. And it was in that time where as a staff, we sensed, you know what, even though things are so uncertain right now, and launching a church service looks so different than what we thought it was going to look like. Even though there's so much uncertainty, we need to start to gather as a church for worship and to hear from God through a message, to, to practice communion and remember Jesus together. We need to gather. So November 1st, 2020, we, we gathered for our first service right here in the room. And it was a blast. And you know what? We've seen God move in a bunch of different ways over the years. Some of my most favorite are uh, the generational disciple making that we saw even just six months after meeting like this for the first time. Four generations of disciples making disciples who make disciples and so on. And that's just continued. We've gotten to celebrate 20 people getting baptized, declaring Jesus is Lord. Many of us have experienced Jesus-centered community unlike any other time in our lives. And as we've grown in relationship with each other, by God's grace, we've grown in our relationship with him. We've, uh, we've sought to bless our community as a church, overflowing God's love, partnering with the city of Lone Tree at events, local nonprofits, etc. How can we serve our city? And every week, we're praying for one. We're praying for one. There are 319 names and counting on these three signs. People, like friends, neighbors, coworkers, family members, people in our lives that we love and we know they would benefit from experiencing God's love, that they, would, that they need a relationship with him. So we're asking every week, God, would you please give me an opportunity to express your love to them? We're praying for one. We've also had the privilege of supporting local church plants, whether that's financially or through coaching. We've, we want to be a part of the kingdom work happening here. We are not the only church here. There are some incredible churches, and we need more of them. So we want to be a part of that. But if you've been with us for more than a week, you know church planning is not always easy. COVID was its own deal, but we've also faced spiritual opposition. We've been stretched, we've been challenged, we've questioned, we've doubted. We've had to say goodbye to some close friends, some family members, as they've moved or moved on, and it is hard. And through the hard, I continue to see that God is faithful. He is so faithful. Uh, Jesus never said that following him was going to be easy. He was talking to his disciples, and he was actually saying, look, you should expect to be persecuted. I'm not saying that we've experienced persecution like Jesus said. I'm just saying that we have experienced some hard. And when Jesus talked about persecution, here's what he had to say to his followers. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Our culture trains us to think that hard equals bad. Hard does not necessarily equal bad. Hard is just hard. And Jesus is our hope in the hard. Our hard personally, our hard corporately, Jesus is our hope. So we know that even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, we know that God is working. He never stops working. Now, by nature, I'm a planner. I love to plan. I love to strategic plan. I love to plan my days, my weeks, etc. I'm weird about how much I like planning, but what God's been teaching me 
in this whole church planting process is to lay down my plans and to pursue his. Because he's got it. Like, he knew what he was doing when he called us to South Denver. He was faithful through COVID. He has been providing all along. I mean, initially, that was through fundraising partnerships. But you know what? Over the last six months, it's been from you all, from our church family, rallying around the mission that God's given us. God is faithful. And he's been connecting the disconnected. He's been growing us in our relationships with him. And he's been using prayer as the common thread to do it. Prayer is his invitation to us to grow in our relationship with him, to engage with him in a conversation. I I see it in my life. I see it in our church. When we pray, we encounter God, and he reveals whatever's next. Often when I pray, I like to present my plans, my purposes to God and say, God, would you bless this for me, please? Like, I think this is a good idea. Would you just, like, make it happen for me? That's how I often approach God in prayer. But what God has been teaching me in prayer and my experience in prayer has been over the last few years is that while I come with my agenda, God will graciously listen, like humor me, and then when he thinks I'm ready, he'll slowly align me with his agenda, get my heart in line with his, inviting me to lay down those those plans and purposes to pursue his. So last fall, as a staff, we were praying, God, we want want to see breakthrough. For 40 days, we, we we prayed, we fasted for breakthrough. We were asking for this, we're seeking him for that, and he felt silent for 40 days. 40 days came, 40 days went, and it felt like silence because we were having a hard time hearing from him. And and then we just kept praying. We kept seeking. We kept knocking because that's the invitation to pursue him. And I don't even know how many days after that 40 days of prayer and fast because I lost count. It was like, wow, that was, we'd been there, done that, and Lord, we still need to hear from you. November 13th rolls around. And it was, it was an interesting day for me because that morning I had a support team meeting, group of guys who support me, family of the church, as we're raising up elders, had that meeting. Then I got to meet with our staff team. And after lunch, I had a meeting with a local pastor. I had these three different meetings, and I had this one united action step. None of those people had talked to each other. And yet God was saying, hey, I want to, you need to spend some time with me. Seeking clarity around the vision going forward. And I'm thinking, I have so much to do this week. Like I have more things to do than time to do it. But in my gut, I just knew, who cares? Like if I got all these things that I think are important, none of that matters if it's not of the Lord. So threw my plans to the wind and just, spent time praying, reflecting, listening. And in that time, I felt like I received more clarity around what it would look like to pursue God and to pursue his kingdom here in South Denver as it is in heaven than I'd had in years. And I want to share it with you. But here's where it's anchored. It's anchored in prayer. And it's inspired from Jesus' prayer. If you have a Bible, you can turn there with me. It's Matthew 6, 10. We're going to look at just a phrase in the Lord's Prayer. You can also follow along in the app. When when he's teaching his disciples to pray, Jesus prayed to the Father this. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When he's teaching his disciples to pray, he's, he's teaching them to seek God's kingdom and God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And may Jesus' prayer inspire our prayer. God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done in South Denver as it is in heaven. It's a prayer that I had prayed countless times over the years, just in passing, like in my morning chair time, in a staff meeting, even from stage. Like I I prayed that we'd see his kingdom come in South Denver as it is in heaven. And while that that may have been a passing prayer over the years, it's going to be our prayer mantra for the years to come. 
Because we're not seeking our kingdom, we're seeking his kingdom. And we're going to do it by pursuing his will and his way. God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done in South Denver as it is in heaven. Jesus was all about God's kingdom. His ministry was characterized by it. His message was characterized by it. He didn't just pray that God's kingdom would come and teach his followers to do the same. Jesus brought God's kingdom wherever he went. Uh, We see Jesus' ministry launch, kick off, in Matthew 4, 17, where we read this, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. From the outset, Jesus' ministry, his message was all about the kingdom. The Gospel of Matthew uses the, the term kingdom of heaven. Other Gospels will say the kingdom of God. They're synonymous. What's a kingdom? We don't like talk about kingdoms much in our day and age. A kingdom is where a king's rule and reign is realized. It's where his will is carried out. So God's kingdom is where God's rule and reign are realized and his will is carried out. At some point, we're going to have to do like a whole teaching series on the kingdom of God. And I can't wait. That's going to be, that's going to be an exciting series. But there's something we need to understand about the kingdom for this message today. The kingdom of God has kind of two natures to it. It is already here and not yet fully realized. Already not yet. And we see this in Jesus' ministry. We see it in his teaching. And we see it throughout scripture. When Jesus walked the earth, he was ushering in God's kingdom, helping people realize God's rule and reign in their lives, in the world. And what we also see in Scripture is that when Jesus comes back, the kingdom of God is going to be fully realized. It's going to be incredible. Well, Jesus ushered in God's kingdom, the already nature of his kingdom, in a couple of ways. He practiced the kingdom and he preached the kingdom. If we keep reading verses 18 through 25 of Matthew chapter 4, here's what we see. We see Jesus practicing the ways of the kingdom. Just, just listen to this. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I'll send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria. And the and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed. And he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. From inviting people to follow him to performing miracles and healings, Jesus ushered in the kingdom of God in his time on earth. Because in the kingdom of God, people are in a relationship with God. People are experiencing healing and freedom. Uh, Revelation gives us a picture of what is to come. And there we see that there will be, there's no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Like, Like that's all past. That is not of God's kingdom. And we're going to one day fully realize it, but there's also an already component of God's kingdom. And from the outset, Jesus was ushering that in. He was healing people. He was helping them experience freedom and discover a relationship with God. Now, if we kept reading, we don't have time to read this whole section of scripture, but if we kept reading Matthew 5 through 7, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. Most would say it's Jesus' most comprehensive teaching on the kingdom. And there we see that that God is inviting us to have a relationship with him. He's not looking for some rote religious duty. He wants a relationship. He is a good father. 
And he wants to transform our hearts. So throughout Jesus' ministry, he's modeling the ways of the kingdom. He's teaching the ways of the kingdom. And he, he describes God as a father. God the Father, who rejoices when one who is lost comes home. Throws a party, heaven parties, when one who is far from God enters a relationship with God through Jesus. It's, it's even why Jesus was sent. He said it his own mission this way. He said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. It's Jesus' mission that has inspired our mission as a church, to connect the disconnected to a growing relationship with God. And as Jesus laid his life down to seek and save the lost, we're looking for opportunities to lay ourselves down and point people to Jesus, where they can find hope, where they can find healing, where they can find freedom, where they can experience the kingdom of God in relationship with God. Jesus didn't just pray for God's kingdom. He, he brought it about. And similarly, he also sought God's will. In Matthew 26, we see Jesus praying right before he goes to the cross, and he's talking with the Father, and this is a, these are a couple of things that Jesus prayed. Verse 39 and then uh, verse 42. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, as you will. Then has a moment with his disciples, and he comes back. He went away a second time and prayed, My Father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Jesus prayed for the Father's will, and he sought the Father's will with his life, even to the point of laying his life down, so that we, you and me, can have a relationship with God. We can experience his kingdom. So may Jesus' prayer inspire our prayer. God, may your kingdom come. May your will be done here in South Denver as it is in heaven. And may Jesus' ministry inspire our ministry. After a lot of prayer, after a lot of discussion, a lot of reflecting on things that we've learned from the first few years of church planting, after all of that, our team came up with a plan. How do we, how do we practically seek God's kingdom here in South Denver as it is in heaven? We're holding this plan with wide open hands because ultimately we want to see his will be done. But here's what we think to the best of our, our knowledge and know-how and learnings. We want to see his kingdom come in South Denver as it is in heaven. And this year the goal is to be locally established as a church. We want deep roots in this community. We're not looking to be a flash in the, a flash in the pan. Like We want long-term impact, kingdom impact here in South Denver. I'm going to share more about that in a sec, but just for a moment, in 2025, 2026, what we're hoping to see is that we would locally expand, not, not for our name, not for our glory, for the kingdom. We want to multiply Jesus-centered communities to connect the disconnected here in South Denver. That's multiplying community groups, that's ministries, Hopefully the family ministry will grow, more rooms for Connect Kids. I'd love to see a student ministry so we can better partner with families and serve students. I'm praying that, that we could launch a, a campus or a church somewhere else in South Denver so that the gospel can continue to go forth. And, and that's exciting, and there's a lot behind that, like why we want to head there in the years to come. But you know what? That's like, that feels a little bit far out right now. And as God reveals what all that can look like, we'll share it with you, and we'll share in that moment together and, and pursue it together. But here's what we feel like we need to focus on this year, what it means to be locally established as a church. And we see three components there. The first being leadership, right? From the beginning, we've had an external board. We call it our management team. They're pastors from partner churches who helped connect launch. We are so grateful for them. And the vision has always been a local elder team who will help spiritually oversee the church through stewarding resources and shepherding people. And I shared earlier, we've got a support team of guys that we're raising up as, you know, in supporting us, but we're also raising up elders. And my hope, my, my goal, my prayer is that we could commission a local elder team this year. 
We, we're in the process as a staff of hiring an associate pastor, another full-time person to join the team to help us welcome and engage guests and care for our church family. And we want to empower those of you who are leading groups and teams and coaching leaders. Like as you make disciples, we want to make sure we're discipling you better and better and better. So you're supported, you're invested in for both now and in the years to come. Now, the second component of that locally established goal is finances. And you know what? We have seen God generously, generously provide. It's been incredible. He did that initially through fundraising partnerships. But like I said, the last six months, God's been funding this through our church family's generosity. And we give him all the glory for that. Church planners dream of this. But our goal's never been to survive. The goal is kingdom impact. And we're praying that God will keep providing as we seek him and what we believe he has ahead of us as a church, which includes the third component being a facility. We, we're so grateful, so grateful for the rec center. There have been some bumps along the way, but we're grateful that they open their doors to us week after week after week. And while we're thankful for that, what we also realize is that if we want to have the, in, the impact that, that we want to have here in South Denver, we need our own space, a space that we could use 24-7, a space that could be a blessing to South Denver. And we're looking. We're, we're, I've been working with re realtors for the last couple of months, and here's kind of the area that we're looking in, all right? We're holding this with an open hand, too, but we're looking here because this is where our church family lives. Like, we, we surround this, this quadrant, all right? And it's county line to the north, chambers to the east, Ridgegate to the south, and Yosemite to the west. We're just looking in this general area because, one, that's kind of the center of where all of, our, all of you all, all of us are coming from, and we still see need in this area for a Jesus-centered church. Now, if you know of an office space, an industrial space, a flex-use space, something, retail space, that could work for us, let, let us know. Like, we would love to explore it. We're looking for something probably 7,500 to 10,000 square feet. That seems to be what would meet our immediate needs and also give us some room to grow. Well, while all of this it, it is a goal, a hope, a plan, we're holding it with open hands. Because while we would love to move into our own facility this year, we know that God's timing is better than our timing. So we're trusting him in all that. But we are going to seek, we're going to search, we're going to look. So the goal, to develop leaders, to steward finances, to find a facility, all of that, those are, those are part of a process. They aren't the end, the end goal. They're laying a foundation for what can come in the years to come. Multiplying Jesus-centered communities so that those who are disconnected, our friends, our neighbors, coworkers, People who maybe they wouldn't come into a rec center for a church experience, but they would go to another space, or they would you know, be open to this expression. Cool. We want to create opportunities for people like them too so they can grow in a relationship with God. What's our prayer? Our prayer is that God's kingdom will come. His will be done in South Denver as it is in heaven. And here's, here's what I know. I know that when we prayerfully ask, we will grow in our relationship with God. I, I know that when we seek, we will find God. And I've experienced it firsthand, that when we knock, God's going to open the door. He'll open a door to something that's probably different from what we pictured, but better than we could ask or imagine. And I, I believe that if we see God's kingdom come here, we're going to be seeing more and more people getting baptized, starting public expression of this starting a relationship with God. My prayer is that you would get to baptize your pray for once. I'm praying that we have baptisms weekly, that we get to party with heaven weekly. While Denver is known as one of the loneliest cities in the country, I, I want to be a part of eradicating loneliness in Jesus' name. Not just so that people can experience relationship with each other, but so that they can grow in their relationship with God. 
I, I believe that we're going to see people experience healing in Jesus' name because that's normative in the kingdom of God. I hope and pray that we get to partner with other churches in our area, like strengthen and build the partnerships that we've got but so that we can see the gospel go forth and, and see other churches started. Whether our name's attached to it or not, that's not the point. The point is people knowing Jesus. So we pray, God, may your kingdom come, may your will be done in South Denver as it is in heaven. And look, this is a prayerful vision. All of it is a prayerful vision. We hold the plans with a wide open hand, but we are going to seek God earnestly in prayer. So I've invited a couple people in our church family to just come join me, and we're going to pray together collectively. We're going to pray for this, because this isn't just like a cool idea. This is what we're invited into as Jesus followers right here in South Denver. You guys can come on out. Thanks for watching. We hope that the message encouraged your faith. If it did, be sure to subscribe and share it with a friend to encourage them too. My name's Chris. I have the privilege of serving as the lead pastor here at Connect Church, where we believe that life with Jesus and life with others is best. That's why we exist as a church to connect the disconnected to a growing relationship with God. And we do that in a couple of ways. First is help you connect with Jesus through our weekly services. Second, connect with people through joining a community group where you can make some friends and grow in your faith. And third, connect people with Jesus by serving and sharing your story with others. I hope to see you at a worship service soon. And in the meantime, be sure to download our free church app by searching Connect Church Community in your phone's app store. The app is the best way to stay up on everything that's going on around Connect. Let us know how we can help you get connected by filling out a Connect card, find a group, and even give to help see this mission and ministry advance so that more lives can be touched with the good news of Jesus. You can connect with God, community, and your purpose, and we're here to help. See you soon.